Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the health of Magic the Gathering Finance and I'm going to bring this card up first and foremost because when Battle for Zender card came out, Expedition Misty Rainforest, that was considered one of the most valuable, if not a card that if you held on to, it would continue to go up in price. It was considered very highly, highly in demand at the time and the people thought that today, after the Battle for Zendikar went out of print, the card would just be so expensive, and you had to buy in early on when there was a larger supply of it. That turned out to be absolutely false, as well as some other things uh, we're going to talk about. Now, the future of MTG Finance is bleak. It's very bleak. Uh, I know a lot of people in MTG Finance who are getting out. One of my friends, uh, Kobe, he owns probably five times as many, ma as many valuable magic cards as I do, and he is selling out like crazy at a heavy discount rate. I, I would buy his collection, but I'm also trying to sell my collection at heavily discounted rates. And the reason that is the case, it's a player's game. I completely agree with that. So, I have accumulated a lot of cards, and you might say, oh, well, you should be punished for accumulating nine Lilianas of the Veil. But I accumulated them when they were like $25. Like, there's still more than $25 today. What is really um, forcing me to reevaluate my collection, uh, I'm definitely not buying as much new Magic cards, and I'm not playing as much Magic. Uh, obviously, I have a home. It's a beautiful home. It's brand new. I just had it repainted for a lot of money and uh, the garden work is all set. I have people for that. And it's like, hmm, would I rather buy a case of magic cards or buy nice wine or go out to dinner with my significant other at a nice restaurant? And the answer at this point in my life is I would rather do the dinner and have the nice bottle of wine. I feel like that's the same for a lot of people who hold a large amount of collections. And if the collection itself is not accumulating value and every day it goes plummets in value, then why would you have it? So if you can afford a collection and you like it, I love Philia, right? It's clear. Um, but at the end of the day, do I really need 200, 300 copies of her to enjoy Philia? Actually, in this case, I probably will uh, put her in card sleeves. I'm trying to buy something from Amazon so I can display all my filios because there's different languages, there's foil, there's... I don't actually have any of the promo ones because I think they're kind of ugly, but I thought it would be a great display for my home office, and I'm trying to figure out how to buy one of those. I saw her at Michael's the other day, and I really liked it. I'm... Overall, not too concerned. Like if I don't sell my collection, I'll keep it. And there's a lot of great memories. I have used my collection. I have utilized it. I haven't sat on it. You might be like, why do you need nine lilies of the veil? Because at any time I can trade them into cards I want. Uh, that's why at one point I had 40 Force of Wales. 42 Force of Wales was my first video on YouTube. I traded every single one of them away before the reprint because they were such great trade bait. So if I needed this standard card, I needed this modern card, all right, take a force of will. Even if that person has four of them, he's going to take it in trade value because to them, to him or her, they are trading up. So MTG Finance has changed a ton, I think, for the better. I fully agree with where we're going and people are afraid that we're going to Yu-Gi-Oh! We're going to Pokemon. Let me make very clear, Pokemon reprints boxes. I can see that. I can see us reprinting an old box. They would probably test it with like a crappy box, like Invasions, to see what happened to it with it. Because think about what's happening here. We're reprinting all the really good cards in Innistrad, but we're not reprinting the box. But the box still has value. So Wizard of the Coast can still make a ton of money from reprinting the box when they already reprint all the good cards in it anyway. So like, what's the next step is to reprint the box to let people draft. And... They already do that in Magic Online. They call it a flashback draft. My gut, my gut, and for most of my reasoning of Magic the Gathering, it's been pretty correct. You might point out some things that I've speculated and got incorrect, but some of 
my speculations have been really far-fetched and it's worked out. My gut feeling is we are going to become a Yu-Gi-Oh-esque or we're moving, we're moving heavily towards that direction where uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, if a card is worth $50, they put it in reprints and then we get it in a tin or a dual deck or we'll get the card out. And if the card ever hits like $100, they'll print it as a common or something, which is kind of what's happening to some of the cards in Modern Masters. In Eternal Masters, is they're getting downshifted. Like the best example I have is Inquisition. So a lot of people speculated on Inquisition and Conspiracy 2. I was like not too fond of that speculation. And now they're being punished into oblivion. Uh, Tamagoyf is finally under $100. Uh, and I don't see him going up very much. I only see him dropping. I can see him dropping to 70 maybe to 60. I don't think he'll get to 50. My overall feeling about Magic the Gathering is it should be a player's game 100% and the card value should not dictate what deck you can play. All cards should be affordable and if someone wants to be you know pimp out their deck they should have that ability to do it but not at the cost of people not playing the, the format. So we have a lot of different we have the epic expedition mythic we have uh, different uh, foil copies, non-foil copies, and there's so many different versions of them. And Modern Master foils tend to be a lot ch cheaper than regular foils. It's good. We have diversity. That's exactly what Yu-Gi-Oh! has. Yu-Gi-Oh! had a card called Tour Guide of something. It's a beautiful card. And it used to be over $70, I feel like, maybe over 100 And they reprinted that uh, in so many times. They kept reprinting it until eventually it became under ten dollars and they didn't stop they're like oh cool because to them that moves product to the Yu-Gi-Oh player they can finally play with the card they need to play with so i completely agree with the direction of it but if you do have a big collection and you need the money you need to sell right now you need to sell today and i normally don't make statements like that right normally i'm like oh okay maybe we can buy it maybe we can do it. maybe 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 if you have a collection and you're not using cards in that collection, sell it because your collection will only go downhill. Now, there is a caveat and the caveat is a reserve list. My honest gut feeling about the reserve list is, is it's propped up by investors. And that's because how many new players are playing Legacy? Now, people will say, oh, how many players are playing Legacy? That's not the question. The question is how many new players who have never played Magic get into Legacy? The answer is very little, very, very little, because there's such a large investment. The community is already built and the community is small and there's a limit to the community. So at the end of the day, uh, I can say with, you know, honestly, I'm going to keep my collection, but if I needed the money and I currently don't need the money, I would sell it today. I would sell whatever extras I had that I was not using today. I would not... The only cards I would keep are cards I love, like Philia, Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, I do love my Noble High Arcs. And, you know, the Princess cards, I would keep them because they remind me of a really good time in Magic. Uh, but everything else that I didn't need, even the Lilies, I would be like, all right, cool, I need to get rid of my Lilies because who knows if she's an Amaket. I don't know. Maybe she's an uncommon Amaket. Like, that is, to me, something that could eventually happen because... And Yu-Gi-Oh! It happens very often. And we are moving towards a Yu-Gi-Oh! cycle. And I, per I absolutely agree with it. I think it should be a player's game. I think these cards need to be a ton cheaper. And it shouldn't... Your, the size of your wallet should not dictate what deck you play. People say, oh, you can play a budget road deck. You could, but... You should have the option to play the tier one deck if you wanted to. A lot of people playing the budget decks and the bad deck. Uh, I don't I want to say they're bad. They are bad. Uh, a lot of people playing less than optimal decks. That's probably the friendly way to say it. If you gave them access to the cards that are very good, see how many of them want, will still play that same exact deck, right? They just want to win. I mean, I, I, my, gut, my gut tells me that we're going into a Yu-Gi-Oh type of deal. And that has started for some time. 
uh, with the new management. The new management, remember, we are, we're under new management. If any regular person, any regular CEO looks at this account, they're probably like, why don't we reprint this stuff? Like, isn't it going to help us sell packs? It's like, oh, no, we got to worry about the collectors. At the end of the day, they were, they were worried about two things. User base. User base, how many new, especially how many new players they can bring in. And lastly, how many packs they can sell. That's it. I always felt it was kind of strange that they didn't have control over the secondary market or didn't assert control over the secondary market. They let Star City Games do a buyout on the Fetchlands. They let Channel Fireball. They let all these vendors control the market. But in actuality, they just can just, they have absolute control. They are the regulators. They can reprint anything at any time they, they, they want. Now, the reserve list is a little tricky, and that's a different discussion, so I... We'll discuss that a little later. But overall, like, why? Like, why would you make an investment in Magic the Gathering right now? You wouldn't. It should be a player's game. And I absolutely agree with that philosophy that they are taking. Anyways, bye guys.